Hello, this is Paul Page with the Journal of Commerce. We're here at TPM Asia in Shenzhen, uh, and we're talking to John Kessels of Field Fisher Waterhouse, British law firm. Uh, John is an expert in regulatory affairs uh, in Europe, particularly in the UK. John, thank you for being here today. Nice to see you, Paul. Good. The, um, the U.S. right now is embroiled in a, a discussion over, um, over antitrust immunity for ocean carriers. The uh, Europeans have had experience with that over uh, for the last two years when the block exemption was eliminated. What's been the experience and the impact in Europe? Well, the European Commission is currently carrying out studies into what has actually happened. Carriers are reporting that uh, prices are far less stable um, and therefore uh, that we should go back in effect and allow price discussions um, amongst carriers. In my view, the European Commission just won't wear that. I think, if anything, the tide's turning the other way. As you say, uh, the US is looking at getting rid of their antitrust exemption. Um, the European Commission led the way on this. I know that other, other jurisdictions are looking at their exemptions. Singapore has just renewed its exemption, but it's significantly restrained. Um, so I think the, 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 the European lead will be followed in other jurisdictions. And, and carriers and others will just will just have to wear it, really. Have you seen an impact in the market that you hear about? Uh, prices, as I say, are, le are less stable, uh, but overall, in my view, carriers were in any event um, behaving compliantly uh, with the post-block exemption position long before the block exemption actually disappeared. I mean, the block exemption effectively allowed price fixing. Now, carriers, unless they were acting illegally, were not engaged in price fixing, even when the block exemption was there. Price discussions, yes. So I, I don't think there's been such a big change since the block exemption has disappeared. Uh, we're not talking about them wanting to return to the days of conferences. <laughs> well, well that, that, that ain't going to happen. <clears throat> now, what, what are the other big regulatory issues right now involving maritime? I, I think the other big regulatory issue, and it's not just for maritime, it's for uh, everyone, is the bribery law. It's a UK law, uh, but it's more pernicious uh, than the FCPA, so more far-reaching. Um, in effect, it creates a strict liability uh, corporate offence of allowing bribery to occur within your organisation. Um, and that covers agents and third parties. So it's very far-reaching, and unless uh, a company has put adequate procedures in place uh, to prevent bribery, then it's going to be on the hook. So that's, a, that's a, 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 a very substantial change and one that I know a lot of people are worried about. That was due to come into force in October this year um, because the, the, the UK authorities haven't had a chance to publish guidance as yet. That's been put back, so it'll be April next year. But a lot of people I know in Maritime are worried about that. Thanks, Paul. Good to see you.